Casey Bell, and you're watching Writer to Writer Interviews. Welcome to another episode of Writer to Writer Interviews. I'm your host, Casey Bell, and today's guests are the adventurous Haley Kilgore and Katya Reed. Let's get this show started. So really excited to be here today with you, Katya. Um, so I guess my first question is, um, what got you into writing? You know, it's not something <laughs> your, your average every day of the mill person kind of says like, yeah, I wrote a book. Like <laughs> most people look at me like I'm nuts when I tell them this. So how did you get into writing? Well, it's just kind of something I just always did all my life. Uh, I write about my days and that transgressed into something far more. <laughs> Nice. I like it. I like it. So what was kind of your process for coming up for your characters and your plot and your world? Um, you know, I've, I've got a couple of friends who are authors and even talking to them, they always look at me like, you're such a weird person the way you come up with stuff. So I always love asking people, <laughs> how, how did the, you know, just you get that light bulb moment and, you know, how did you kind of roll with the ball? Well, it was just, just life. Really, it was life and dreams and visions and encounters and all these epic and amazing adventures. So I would just like put it into this book and my art and just tell the story. That's really how it came. And, you know, of course, like I have like a little method to get into my writing, like more deeply to compose like the scenes. Like I got to have my Ivan Torrent playing. He's like my favorite composer in the whole wide world. So, and I'm just like a mad scientist and a genius at work and I'm like yes create come to life <laughs> <laughs> nice okay I like it I like it um okay so I feel like another popular question for people is what's your favorite character but I'm not gonna ask you that who is your your struggle bus child who is the hardest character to write for you the hardest character to write for me I would say, well, that's a good question. No one's ever asked me that one before. The hardest character for me to write for my book? Yeah, of course. It would be Midas. It'd be Midas. It'd and, be and why, I guess, is a, a good question, too. Um, well, he was supposed to, it was the way, like, I had thought he was going to be, and he turned out the complete opposite of what I had for him. Um, he was originally supposed to be like hardcore villainous, but no, he's, he's not that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plenty of characters who do that to me too. It's always just like, please do what you're told, make my life easier. And then they never do. Um, <laughs> so what other authors or books inspire you? Other authors and books? Well, I get inspiration from like everything beyond, not just books, but I, I love mangas, I like animes, I love video games, like Zelda. Um, nice. I do like some books, like I love the five people you meet on the way to heaven and Tuesdays with Maury. Um, I do like J.R. Tolkien. Uh, I love George Lucas's Star Wars. I, I even read the script. It's, yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I mean, so am I, so I feel ya. Cool. <laughs> Um, okay, last question. It's gotta be a really good one. Let's see. All right. What's a genre you don't ever see yourself writing a book for, but you would absolutely love to do it? I'd say historical dramas, <laughs> like Pride and Prejudice type. Like, um, okay. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really into those. That's but fair. I like watching, like, in a like seeing other artists and writers create those but for me nah I gotta <laughs> have my I like a little bit of everything fair fun. enough fair enough I know you're not going anywhere we're coming right back the four told story follows young Midas in a future world who experiences challenges from the onset of his life plagued by light altering tragedies crushing his desire to Exist. The Four Told Story by Katia R. B. Reed. For more information, go to thefourtoldstory.com. Um, so what sets your story apart from others? Um, 
what sets mine apart? You know, I want to say everything, but of course that's not entirely true. It's, you know, it's an epic fantasy. Um, but something that does set it apart is that it's both geared towards young adults and new adults. So it's a very good kind of cross a genre book. Mm-hmm. Also, as a marine biologist, I put a lot of, you know, my knowledge about the world and how I view the world. So I get characters that are not always thinking in a way you would expect them to because I do know some really weird things and things that general people don't and they always end up popping in my book um yeah so I think that's just kind of different you kind of get a very different frame of mind from some of my characters oh very very cool I read like the excerpt it was so good I want that king he is something else (laughs) I'm Caius Caius, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, goodness. Like, he says that one thing, and this, I cracked up. But, like, it was when Braxton um, was telling uh, Keegan to not panic when she was in the little, um, the little dungeon. Yeah. And <laughs> so he comes out, like, from the shadows or something, and he's just like, what if I, what if I told you about showing kindness, Braxton? <laughs> I was just like, oh my goodness, this guy, he is such a, he's a good character. He's a good role-winning character. All of them are. They just have like this interesting dynamic. So I was like, wow. <laughs> All right, I should ask the next question. <laughs> um, so if you were a character in your book, what would be your favorite place to visit? So I saw like the little, I see the world map and it's like, whoa, there's like this adventure and this mystifying world of magic um so that one's actually really really easy to answer um (laughs) as a marine biologist I immediately have to go with the answer of I want to go visit the mermaids you know in their ocean palace like 110 percent easy easy question like anything ocean related fish related I'm like I'm there that's me let's go oh that's awesome (laughs) and my next question would be what inspired your characters? Um, sometimes there's nothing that really inspires them. They just come from a need. Other other characters inspired by people or sometimes interactions with people that I'm just like, ooh, ooh, this is this has gotta be a scene, so there's gotta be a character. Um, you know, but for the most part, they're a, they're a mix of someone I know, kind of, or myself in some weird way, shape, or form. That's amazing. I kind of got that sense with Ke- Keegan, because she was like, she came from North Carolina too. Sorry, it's did my research, so I'm like, I was like, whoa, this is so cool. I want to find out more. <laughs> no, you're fine. Keegan actually is really heavily based off of myself, because um, this whole thing started as bedtime stories to myself, and I would just put myself into the story, and then there eventually came a point where I'm like, okay, we kind of have to separate myself and the in the story, but like main characters already got way too much of my personality and characteristics and they're kind of stuck but okay (laughs) see that's the best when we put our when we put ourselves into our characters because it makes them more real oh absolutely it's one of my favorite things like uh especially if I've got friends you know that have written books I love sitting there and being like all right I know that character trait I know that quirk (laughs) yeah this is you this is totally you it's it's so much fun (laughs) so true so true and my final question. Um, did I go through all of them? I like had to write a whole extensive note thing here. <laughs> I'm like, there's so many questions I want to ask. I can only pick so many. All right. So my final question is, um, who is your favorite character in your story? Oh, that's so hard. Because I love all of them <laughs> immensely. But then I also want to throttle them all half the time because they don't like to listen. So that's really hard. Wait, you said they don't like to listen. That's interesting. <laughs> I can always like have a have a half baked idea of this. Yeah, this is totally gonna happen. And then one character just like, no, we're going <laughs> in the other direction. And it's just like, but oh, please, <laughs> but it just don't go against the wheel. <laughs> pretty much. And so it's just you know they all. They all have minds and personalities of their own, and they they completely exist in my mind. I recognize this, but they are fully functioning people who will not do what you want. Um, that favorite <laughs> character. 
Um, I think I gotta go with Caius. Caius? Because he he's absolutely the villain, and I love villains. Um, but he's fun to write because he is both wildly just a horrible person. Yes. Got wildly <laughs> good reasons for doing what he does. And so, like, making him do really awful things while being completely logical is just something that's really fun and, like, shouldn't work, but it does. That's, a, he, he is pretty evil. I was like, oh my goodness, poor guy was asking him for water after he, like, this massive explosion. And he's just like, water, please. And he's like, first answer the question. And he's like, please. And then he just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. And then, like, he's like, trying to read her thoughts like he's a he has this mystifying thought reading power I was like oh snap and he's like <laughs> tell me where you come from and she's like no like I come from North Carolina he's like that doesn't exist get her <laughs> 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 was like, he's so funny I mean it's not funny like that he's that evil but I mean it's just funny like I could just see the, it cinematically playing in my head it was just really He's just really a, a fun character. Yeah, no, I, again, I have so much fun writing him. So, <laughs> yeah, totally get that. That's awesome. So don't go anywhere. We still have more to go. If only they had known how important they were, the children of prophecy are the only ones who can protect Archeo. Now they must face the danger set before them and survive. Who are they? Check out Nanigan by H.C. Kilgore. All right, so the first question is, what publishing company did you use and were you satisfied enough to suggest it to someone who's never published a book and looking to publish a book? Would you suggest it to them? Um, so I am published with Rock Hill Publishing. Um, and I actually do recommend them to a lot of people who ask me, you know, I'm kind of interested in writing a book and publishing um, simply for the fact that Rock Hill focuses almost exclusively on first time writers. So they, you know, there's really no prerequisites prereq for them. They just, you know, give us a book and if we like it, that's all we need. You know, they're not like the bigger publishing companies where they're like, you know, can you prove that you've submitted to magazines and had short stories published and all that kind of stuff, or you have an agent there, you know, they're very willing to work with the newbies and, and the little guys. So they're a really great place for people to start. And they're a small publishing company. So you get this great hands-on experience. And, you know, the editor is phenomenal. The owner's awesome. You know, the other authors are all just really great people. And it's like having a little brighter family. So, you know, it's just, if you need help, you can go to anyone and, you know, they're all willing to help you. And it's just, it's a great atmosphere for, you know, people who are trying to get the first book out or, you know, maybe trying to get their second book out. Um, it's just, they're great. They're a really good company and I really enjoy working with them. Thank you. Now, is it R-O-C-K-H-I-L-L? -L? Yes. Publishing, okay. Yeah. All right, Katia, same question. Um, I was published by eBook Time. It's an, an independent um, vanity uh, press publishing. You said eBook Time? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm not just asking for the audience, I'm asking for myself because a lot of people ask me to help them publish their books and I tried it like three or four times and it just wasn't for me to publish people's books. So now I'm trying to find publishing publishers for people and I want to make sure they're not the because I've heard a lot of horror stories about people with publishing companies that went bad went out of business or they sold their money didn't do anything for them and I don't want to be the one to suggest a publishing company to someone and that happens to them and I mm -hmm. look like the bad guy so I ask so that I know you had your experience and you can you know tell me whether or not it's good or not so thank you for giving me that information I highly recommend it. Ebook time. Ebook time. Very good. Very good and honest. Awesome. So you ready for your last question? And we have time, so I'll give you some time to think about it because most people need time to think about it. So if there was an author, dead or alive, doesn't matter whether they're dead or alive, that you could travel with, who would it be? Where would you go, and why? Um. Okay. <laughs> So 
This one's easy for me because I'm a biologist and, you know, fantasy writers are great and all, but my first love has always been animals. So an author I would love to travel with would be Gerald Durrell. Uh, he is the author of My Family and Other Animals, but first and foremost, he is actually a conservationist and a biologist, and he and his wife actually founded the Jersey Zoo over in England. Um, and he is more or less like your British version of Steve Irwin. Um, so I would really love to bring him back, and I would really love to pretty much just travel the world and just like play with animals with him. Like I think that would be just so much fun, um, and I would definitely come out with a few scars and some great stories. <laughs> okay, Katya, mm -hmm. same question. Oh, I would say J.K. Rowling. Okay. <laughs> And where would you travel with her? Dead or alive, right? Hmm? Dead or alive. Oh, good. Yeah, J.K. Rowling. I would travel with her. She's so amazingly imaginative and just adventurous. And I seek adventure in real. So I just feel like it would be really fun for us both to travel because we could probably like come up with some really cool adventures. The two of us traveling and adventuring together would be like a recipe for something magnificently awesome. <laughs> well that is all we have for you today for the writer to writer interviews i want to thank my guests Haley and katia for joining me for this episode i want to thank you as well the audience for joining us and watching us thank you again have yourself a great day are you a guest looking for a host to interview you or are you a host looking for guests to interview radio guest list is the website for you it's a free listing of guests looking for shows to interview them, as well as a free listing of shows looking for guests. Whether you're looking for a guest to interview or shows to interview you, go to radioguestlist.com.